Please join me in the call to worship. A call to worship is a call to presence. We want to be fully present here and to feel God's presence here. Notice the space around us, the way it looks, smells, and sounds. With all our senses, we recognize the sacred space and our belonging in it. We gather as good creation, wonderfully made. We join our bodies into one body as we remember the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Please join in hymn number 223, What Wondrous Love Is This? In a few minutes, we'll hear the story of Jesus washing the disciples' feet on the night of his betrayal and arrest. It is a story of deep intimacy and sacred connection. It is also a story about human resistance to God's grace and our discomfort with the ways that Jesus demands the disruption of hierarchies. In this story, Simon Peter first objects to Jesus' plan to wash his feet. Jesus does not rebuke him, but he does insist, for he knows what is to come. As we prepare to lay down our burdens before God in confession, we place our trust in God's desire to know us and be with us. As we enter into the sacred story of John's gospel, let us take a few moments to notice our feet. Take off your shoes, shoes if you want. Wiggle your toes. Plant your feet firmly on the ground. As you experience these sensations, consider the wonder of God who meets us not only from on high, but also kneeling at our feet. Confession returns us to our bodies by reminding us that God claims us exactly as we are. Through repentance, the name that which we have left undone and ask for the help of God and our community to seek repair, restoration, and renewal. Let us pray together our prayer of confession. Loving God, you pour out grace upon us exactly as we are but we confess we are suspicious and react from fear of scarcity. You invite us to take our shoes off and receive the care our bodies need, but we sit on our heels. We sort bodies into worthy and unworthy ones to mask our insecurities. We reject and punish fat bodies, disabled bodies, transgender bodies, and racialized bodies, even when these bodies are our very own. God, remind us that we are made in your image. Help us learn to receive from your abundance so we can share all that we have with others. Let us see that the cups we longingly hold out are already full. May they overflow so that all will have enough. As he does with Peter in the foot washing, 
Jesus transforms our confusion and rejection into joy and connection. With God's help and mercy, we can reciprocate abundance with one another and with creation. In Jesus Christ, we are loved and befriended by God. Thanks Thanks be be to God. this evening is from the book of John, chapter 13, verses 1 to 17. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon, Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, he got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and he returned to the table. He said to them, do you know what I have done to you? 
You call me teacher and Lord. And you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are no greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. With simple elements and simple acts, Jesus flipped the scripts of power to bring about new possibilities for God's love in the world. Before his betrayal and death, Jesus touched his followers and sealed their connection. Jesus taught us to wash one another's feet so that we might witness each other's goodness and be made clean. Through the waters of baptism, God claims us as God's own and marks the calling for our lives onto our bodies. Together, we remember our baptisms. Let us pray. God who poured forth water, God who formed each one of us, we give you thanks for the sacrament of baptism. Allow the cool drip of water on our bodies to bring us closer to you so we might live as your people with justice, kindness, and humility. As we remember your promises to us, renew in us a heart of compassion for others and help us to consider and recognize your presence in all whom we meet. Amen. In this time, I invite you to come forward if you wish to remember your baptism. Let us join together and take off your shoes.
sacraments, God meets us in physical space, offering God's self to us again and again. In a spirit of grateful response, we offer what we have to meet the needs of our neighbors, to serve creation, and to glorify God. Let us give our thanks to God. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God who took on flesh and lived among us, we greet you in worship. We greet you as a creator who made us good in our bodies. We greet you as a redeemer who was perfectly divine and totally human. We greet you as a sustainer, an advocate, a helper, who surrounds us in all our ways and all our days. We come in our bodies of all sizes, races, genders, abilities, sexualities, ages, and appearances, so we might join with your body as we encounter your t you tangibly. Through bread and wine, through this joyful feast, you fill our spirits to overflowing. Let us sing together, eat this bread, drink this cup. As you nourish us through this holy meal, leave us hungry for your kingdom. Leave us thirsty for the justice that you pour out on the world. Let us encounter the bodies around us. Let us see you in the faces of strangers and friends. Taste you in the sourness of grapes. Hear you in the creaks of the sanctuary and the whisper of the breeze. Through Holy Communion, teach us how to be for others as you are for us sustaining help, loving accompaniment, eternal hope. Help us to embrace the mystery of the sacrament as the symbolic and literal blur together until all that remains is your presence with us. We do not come to the table with perfect understanding. Some of us come with childlike faith. Some of us wrestle with questions and doubts. Some of us bear wounds that make us suspicious of this act. With your grace, we trust the sacred possibilities that become tangible when we eat the bread and drink from the cup. We have hope that in doing this, we might gain a glimpse of all that you offer to us. We give thanks for the familiarity of rituals and ask that we would continuously notice the possibilities you offer in them. Be with us as we pray the familiar prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, Mother, loving parent, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it open and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, and giving thanks for it, he poured it out and said, This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The table of the joyful feast is not our table, but God's. Nothing you do, nothing you say, nothing about you can pre prevent you from partaking, for in communion, God reveals the wholeness of who we are together and with God. So as you receive this joyful feast, come exactly as you are. There is, mo there is more than enough. Come.
for all things are ready. Brothers and sisters, this is the body of Christ that has been broken open for you. Take and eat. This is a cup of blessing that has been poured out for you. Take and drink. Please join me in the prayer after communion. Holy mystery, through communion we unite our bodies with your body. And in unity we gain strength and hope. We give thanks for your transforming love. Like the sacraments, we know that love is a doing. And so we ask for your help to turn the nourishment into love for all we meet. Amen. Our closing hymn is really a chant, and so we're going to sing it through three times. Jesus chose to use his final hours to establish intimate and profound physical connections with his friends. In the midst of this connection, he offered a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. This is not an abstract love, sentimental love. This is bread-breaking, foot-washing, messy love. We have visited the font, we have been nourished at the table, and now we go out into the world to live out Jesus' commandment. As we leave this place, may the presence of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer fill the nooks and crannies of our lives. May we go forth in love, filled to the brim. Thank you.